so for several weeks we've been dealing with just ourselves, with uh, getting out of a rut. You all remember that, right? Mm -hmm. Say yes. 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 Because that was just last week. <laughs> Uh, I can pull it back up on the screen right now. Uh, and the one before that was what? Somebody want to tell me? Don't worry, be happy. Because, because see, that's, you know, it's, it's in our nature to want to be happy. It's also in our nature to find ourselves in ruts all the time because we uh, tend to uh, rely on ourselves. So when we put that all together, when we put the, the what we need to do to be happy and what we need to do to get out of a rut, and we tie it all together, we can look at a, at a thing called being used by God. Because until we get out of the rut, until we become happy, we can't be used by God. And part of getting out of that rut is allowing God to use you. Sometimes we think, well, I'm just not feeling it today, so God can't use me. God is going to accomplish His plan in your life. He can accomplish that, and you can enjoy it, and love it, and learn from it, or He can drag you through it. But he's going to get it done. He has got plans for Sierra Baptist. He has proven that. Just look at the people that are here that weren't here three months ago, two months ago. Look at uh, the, the amount of, you know, we have a whole Spanish ministry going that we didn't have. We have children. We had no children two years ago. Not zero. Unless somebody brought their grandkids. Mm -hmm. and, and, and now, and, and some of that Spanish service also, they produce more children. Uh, but uh, there's a Sunday school program going on every week here. We didn't have to come here, and I wonder if there's going to be any kids. I wonder if there's going to be anything to do. Uh, we have a, a, an adult ministry that's running. You guys had 18 people playing games on Friday night. Hey, so I have decided that I need to play more games. <laughs> we make sure you not be in there. Uh, I would have come if it we was closer. You're forgiven. We'll have the next one at my house. You can all try it. <laughs> we'll do a bus. <laughs> We'll charter a bus to bring you all over. Yeah. No, uh, that that was that was really nice when uh, my uh, my spy texted me and told me how many people were here. Uh, that was uh, it was nice to know that that you all care enough about each other to take time out of your week to play Uno. Yeah. Uh, it's a wonderful, I love you, you know. I'm not big on Bunko, but Bunko's fun. A lot of people play that game. I'm not big on it, but I like Skippo. And Twister. But I could not see this group of people. No. No. Play the <laughs> I could see the first round, and then I could see 12 people laying on the ground going, I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I could see that. But anyway, I, I appreciate you all dearly, and I appreciate your your prayers and your, uh, your concerns, and your checking on me. Uh, Barbara, just again, just for your information, Hopefully I have this right because it's been so different. Uh, it, her, her condition has bounced back. It depends on who you ask. Uh, that's the Baptist way. <laughs> I spoke to her Friday before she, she actually came to the church for a couple hours. I spoke to her Friday and she seemed to be doing better. Uh, of course, that's what she told me. 
and then several hours later she was in the hospital. Uh, it seems that part of the surgery that they had is leaking or something and causing her grief. So tomorrow or Tuesday at the latest they will go back in and try to fix that. That's the latest that I'm aware of. Um, I don't know that there's anything else to that. But uh, So like Wednesday she wasn't doing well, Thursday she was great, and Friday she's back now. I understand that, trust me. I know what it's like to not know how you're going to feel till you wake up in the morning. Or till you get up here. Um, but uh, I am done with my chemo for two weeks. It went pretty good. The, the side effects were not that bad as I expected. Uh, of course, maybe that was just a warm up set. Um, still having lots of problems with my back, but that's getting a little better too. So, except for they've got me on some pretty strong medicine. When you start taking morphine and Oxycontin at the same time, you're, uh, you're tired is what you are. Because that stuff wears you out. You don't even have to do anything. I'm saving on my sleeping pill. But, uh, so they're working on getting that, the, the, the pain controlled in my back. Uh, ne next week is when I have, is it next week I have all my tests and stuff? Not this week. Two weeks. Yeah, after next Sunday, I'm at a doctor's appointment every day. I have a colonoscopy and all kinds of stuff, fun stuff going on uh, this, this last week of the month. So, uh, give me a prayer. So, uh, but, uh, I'm doing all right. Hanging in there. But let's talk about, I mean, now that I've done my, see my rambling there. And then got my minutes. How do we take our, our rut and our, and our happiness or lack of happiness, and how do we really get used by God? What does it take to get used by God? Oh, look at that. Is that a pretty slide or what? That's a ram, what you call a rambling slide. I put that up and then I could talk for like 30 minutes. It's like the sky outside. Jeremiah 1 5 said, Before I made you in your mother's womb, I chose you. Before you were born, I set you apart for a special work. Um, that's the new century version, just so you know. Um, God has chosen a work for you. If you're not sure about that, there you go. Because haven't we decided this is true? And everything in it is correct? Well, that's in it. So he has chosen a plan for you. All right? This is out of the message. It's not my favorite um, uh, translation, but I wanted to show it to you. It says, it says, Jesus, in the same way that you gave me a mission in the world, I gave them a mission in the world. All right? Now, what I read you, I think was the same one. No. What I read you was out of the New King James, and it said that you sent me into the world, I sent you. So, uh, what they're saying is, what God's plan is to you is basically your mission in life. What is your mission in life? Your mission in life is your plan. It's the plan that God has designed for you from the beginning of time. Alright? That, that He has ordained, if you would, as He has set apart for you when you were born. Kind of like you were branded on Bonanza on, on, on the back end so that they knew it was your cow. God branded his plan on you so that you would be able to, to know what it is you have to do. Don't walk around looking at your butt trying to reach your plan. <laughs> but, uh, but that's what I'm trying to, I'm trying to get you to understand that, that there is a design for you. And we're going to look at some of the ways that, as you can see from your little fancy thing I got you, uh, some of the things that get in the way, that cause you to be in that rut, and that cause you to be unhappy. All right, so what does it take to be used by God? It took me a long time to make that slide. 
first thing is you must abandon all distractions. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Anything that gets in the way, just let it go. Alright? Oh, dear, if I can sing the Frozen song. Oh, Luke 2.62 in the Living Bible says, Anyone who lets himself be distracted from the work I plan for him is not fit for the kingdom of God. Well, that's pretty tough. I mean, that's just blunt. It's just God calling it like a season. It just says anyone who let... If, if, if you know... If there's a plan for your life, don't you think you'd want to work that plan? So, so why do we, why do we let everything distract us? And it's a lot worse. The distractions. I mean, I'm not even getting into technology and all that stuff. The, the distractions just on basic life. I mean, it's just amazing. I mean, like I do, I, I really do watch way too much gun smoke and banana. <laughs> just say, um, but a lot of them aren't reruns, so I have to watch them because <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen them before. <laughs> it's funny because I'll see one every once in a while. The one will show up in color. Wow. You know, my new thing is in the middle of the afternoon I can watch the Andy Griffith show. <laughs> Because my life is Barney Fuck all day. That's my guy. Um, but they're not in color either. So every once in a while, one will come up that, that they've colored. It's like, look, a new one. <laughs> but it, it's funny. Uh, and that all started because uh, Donna's sister, Denise, was at her house once. And she walked by my room one day. And she says, you know that's not a rerun. Boy just threw me off. Oh no. I was all confused. Because could you imagine how old Matt Dillon is? Yeah. <laughs> old. But anyway, let's keep going. You know you all are interested to see what really cool stuff there is for food today. My wife made something in an Instapot. Does everybody know what an Instapot is? You just throw it all in there and instantly it makes food. <laughs> it's really kind of cool. But anyway, Psalms 119 says, Turn me away from wanting any other plan than yours. That should be your prayer every morning. Father, turn me away from anything that's getting in the way. Alright? We should remove from our lives anything that would get in the way and the sin that so easily holds us back. If you know there's something getting in the way of, of you and God, get rid of it. I mean, there are some things that are in your life that you don't really see as a big distraction. Netflix, Facebook, uh, that you just see as part of your life now. Uh, and uh, we were having breakfast yesterday and I was kind of looking. And, and I'm, just, I'm just as bad as the next person, uh, we don't talk at breakfast. We look and show each other other people's posts on Facebook. You know, hey, look at this one. Hey, look at this one. Oh, isn't that a cute puppy? Oh, you know, we're not talking to each other. We're showing each other other people's lives. You know, our, our, it's, it's, we have most of the same friends on Facebook. But there's some different, I have you know, a lot more Guatemalan people, of course, than she does. Um, but uh, it's funny, she'll say, did you see so-and-so's picture of there on the beach? And you know, I go, yeah, I saw that. And, and it's just like, it's like we're, we're spending time out of our lives discussing, ooh, wow. You just walked by with like eight pizzas. Okay. Sorry, that was what you call a distraction. It's an example. That was an example. Anyway, uh, we spend a lot of time checking out other people's lives, and it's just, it's just and everybody in the restaurant's doing the same thing. Which is probably good because then it's not as loud. Because it's a little restaurant. Anyway. 
What are the biggest distractions? What are your biggest distractions? I, I, I got a couple that are just big to everybody, not specifically. And, and they might not be a, 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 a distraction to you. Like the first one is a desire to get rich. Some of us have given up that distraction, knowing that it's not going to happen. Uh, but uh, that is a distraction in our life. We work, we work, we work. We retire and then go get a second job so that we can retire from that because we want to have money. The need to have money uh, seems to outweigh most other things because, uh, well, we need to pay bills. You know, we're going to talk about money tonight a little bit. Why? Just because we have to. Not because we want to. It's just we have to. Uh, but it's a distraction to try to see how much we can get. And if you'll notice, it's never enough. If I gave you all a million dollars, you would be happy for a little bit. Then you would start thinking what you could do with too many. Because that's just the way we are. We're silly humans. I mean, if life would be so cool with one man, think how cool it would be with two. Or three. Or seven. It would just be easier. Now I know that the Bible clearly says that it is very hard serve God and have money. It doesn't ever say anywhere in the Bible that you cannot be a wealthy Christian. It doesn't say that. It says the, that money is what? The root of all evil? The love of money. Not money. It's okay to have money. I think, personally, I would be an awesome wealthy Christians. I would love the opportunity to try. Just say it. I bet I could work it out. My problem is pretty much like most of yours, you would give it all away. Every time I have money in my pocket, I have a kid walk by. Either the ones that live at my house or the ones that live down the street. But it seems to me that they can smell it. And they know when I have it. The next one is wallowing in your past failures and mistakes. None of you ever do that. Do you ever get distracted thinking you're not good enough? I mean, we talked about that when we were talking about being in a rut. Is that uh, I have let God down. God doesn't need me. I have failed him. Yes, you have. You're right. But luckily, he knew that. Nowhere in here does it say you have to be perfect. Because if that was the case, we could just go home now. But we could go eat now. Then go home. But uh, the devil knows that if he can get you Frustrated about your past? Frustrated about feeling how that you can't do it because you're not good enough? Then you won't do it. I can't serve God because I'm not good enough. I have failed him. I've let him down. I'm just going to let him down again. You're right. You are. He knows that. So get over yourself. And move on. Quit worrying about what you did. Because doesn't it say God forgives you and throws it from where to where? To the east and west ever meet? Technically no. And uh, if God has forgotten it, why are you dealing with it? Why? You messed up. Okay. Confess your sins and move on. Quit beating yourself up. 
Because there's enough people in the world trying to beat you up all by themselves. They don't need your help. And the last one on this is my favorite. I talked a lot about that last week. It's worried about what other people think. Looking in the mirror, wondering what you're wearing is going to be good enough for everybody else. The only way you can really be sure it's good enough for everyone else is if you're going to Walmart. Remember that. Because that's the only place in the world where it does not matter what you put on or don't put on. Or lack thereof. It's, it's amazing. But um, we, we are creatures of habit. And we have this habit of worrying about what others think about. I mean, I, my hair is, is, I mean, it's just an absolute mess. It really is. It's, it's all like long here. It's falling out up here. And, and I was going to go get it cut yesterday, but I just didn't have enough energy. Uh, but every time I go to the bathroom, I look at my hair and I'm going, Oh my gosh, I hope nobody comes over. And, and my mom has nurses and physical therapy people that come over quite a bit, it seems like. And uh, I find myself trying to make sure my hair is right. Because it's real thin right now, so it just kind of goes wherever it wants. And uh, it really bothers me. Nobody notices it but me. You think that nurse lady could really care less about my hair? She's not going to run out and get on her phone or her Facebook page and go, dude, you see that dude's hair I was at just a minute ago. But, but it bothers me. And, uh, and we, we tend to worry about... I, I was looking at... Uh, this is my favorite shirt, by the way, just so you all know. And if you don't think it is, go on the YouTube page. What you will notice is I wear it a lot on Sundays because it's on every sermon. Do you only ask one shirt? Maybe we should buy him a shirt for his birthday. And uh, I don't know if you've ever noticed that, but you probably all do the same thing. You have certain five or six outfits that you wear every week, and it just so happens that. The one outfit you put on Tuesday, you pretty much put on every Tuesday. And you've never thought about it really that much, but now you're going to. Now you're going to start marking off and getting to wear this on Monday. Uh, but I was thinking about it this morning when I put this one on. I go, oh, did I wear this one last week? But no, last week I wore my other favorite shirt. My black gray one. Um, but yeah, but I thought it was funny that I'm just looking at this the YouTube page and all of my sermons, I got the same clothes on. <laughs> but then I noticed maybe it's just because we're filming, Eric and I are at the house and we're filming 10 of those at a time. We're not really doing them for you, we're just, we've got a studio in the back and we're, and we're filming these, get them done on time. Um, not really. But uh, we spend so much time worrying about other people so very much time when when the sad part is the people we're worried about don't even care one of my favorite things to do at the airport and Tara loves doing it with me too she'll probably deny it but she does uh, is is just watching the people and what they're wearing and, and trying to decide so Tara do you think that lady has a mirror at her house? Because if she did, that mirror would be screaming, don't go outside. But it's our nature. I love going to places like Disneyland or any place where there's like tons of people and just sit down and watch people. I'm not judging them because I could really care less. But it's fun to look at them. And, and think, what were they thinking? You know, and then you've got the whole, well, this is a spring outfit, I can't wear that because it's still fall, or this is a winter outfit. Um, and you can always tell what kind of clothes you should be wearing by walking into Target. 
because they rotate their clothes depending on the seasons rather quickly. But anyway, this is what I want you to understand about distractions right here. Your plans are a distraction from God's plans. Your dreams, your wishes, your goals, your ambitions, all your hopes and desires. Ah, that sounds mean. You know who's getting in the way of between you and God? You. Because you have a desire to run your life. Now, if you were to line yourself up with God, and you were having the attitude where I'm going to try to follow what God wants me to do, that would naturally line your plans up with God's plans. Thus, they wouldn't be a distraction. But your thing, God wants you to do missions, and you think that missions is your calling. And God's thinking South Africa, and you're thinking Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I have. I've had the, uh, the, the, the good fortune of being pretty much all over the world. I've been... South Africa, Brazil, Ukraine, blah, Guatemala, all those places. Uh, but I haven't been to Australia. Really want to go to Australia. So I have this desire to be a missionary in, in Australia. God keeps sending me to Guatemala. I love Guatemala. I really do. And, and I'll give up Australia for Guatemala. But, uh, I could be a really good missionary in Hawaii. No, I could. I could be a snorkeling missionary. I don't like snorkeling, but it's just an example. I could do that so well. Let's keep going because we're getting close here. I must adopt God's purposes. Romans six thirteen says, "Give yourselves completely to God. Every part of you. If you want to be tools." in the hands of God to be used for his good purposes. If you want God to use you, you have to let him use you. Hand him your toolbox. Kind of goes back to the plans. Hand him your plans and dreams and go, God, I want to line this up. Put the tools in my box that you need. How, how can I best line up with God's purposes? Acts 20, 24 says the most important thing is that I complete my mission. The work that the Lord Jesus gave me. To tell people the good news about God's grace. That's your mission. That's your plan. At the end of the day, our plan is the same. To make disciples. How we get there, for each one of us is different. I might do the Guatemala route. You might do the Hawaii route. God bless you. I hope you have a good time. Don't tell me about it, though, because then I'll be jealous, and then that'll be another whole sermon. But how we, how we meet God's plan is different for each of us. But the end goal is the same, to build the kingdom of God. When someone says, what's God's plan for you? To build the kingdom of God. How does that look? One of the best ways it works for Donna Baker is through vacation Bible school. That's her thing. One of the best ways that works through Tira is her music. Because that's her thing. Same end result. Different route. Purpose is not different. It's how we get to it. So that's why it takes so many different people to run a church. If everybody in the church's main function was vacation Bible school, boy, that'd be a mess, wouldn't it? We'd have an awesome vacation Bible school, though. Of course, we'd have to be doing it every month. 2 Corinthians 5 says, Through Christ, God has made peace between us and himself. He gave us the work of telling everyone about the peace that we can have with him. So we have been spent, sent to speak for him. We've been sent to speak for Christ. Again, that's our purpose. Your purpose, our mission statement, love God, 
love people, make disciples. That's your purpose. If you're not sure about, oh, I don't know what my purpose in life is, it's right there on the wall. Take a picture of it, put it on your phone. Make it your screensaver, whatever. Your mission is to build the kingdom of God. And we have to do that together. Let's keep going. Because we still have communion to do today. And must anticipate God's help. God will give you all you need from day to day if you live for Him and make the kingdom of God your primary concern. If your primary concern is building the kingdom of God, God will give you everything you need from day to day. Period. End of discussion. That's what He says. But it says He's going to give you everything you need, not everything you want. You need to go to South Africa. You want to go to Hawaii. Right? You need to go door to door. You want to sit in the church and wait for them to show up to you. That's the way it works. Go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. Don't be afraid of people. For I will be with you and take care of you. Isn't that interesting? Go where I send you and say whatever I tell you. I will tell you if you want to be comfortable at talking about God, then talk about it. He will give you what you need to say. You will say things, things will come out of your mouth that you never knew you thought, you didn't even know. Verses will come into your head that you didn't even know you knew. There's a book of Matthew. Really? Because God will provide whatever it is you need. That's what he does. That's how he takes care of you. But you have to look for that. Mark 10, 29 says, Jesus replied, Let me assure you that no one has ever given up anything for love of me to tell others the good news who won't be given back a hundred times over. <clears throat> all this, all these will be here, his here on earth, and in the world to come he shall have eternal life. You're not going to outgive God. You're not going to be out smarting God. God's going to take care of you. And everything that you give to God, He's going to increase a hundred times over. That's what that says. Again, it's in here. Sometimes we don't see it. Sometimes we don't feel it. And we end up in that rut. But we end up in that rut because we're not anticipating God's help. We're not anticipating <coughs> And it says, let me assure you that no one has ever given up anything for love of me to tell others the good news. You're not going to outgive God. You're not going to out-talk God. You're not going to out... I don't know what the exact word is, but you're going to be able to, to, to work your plan and love your plan and, and understand what your purpose is when you let go and let God, when you decide that I know that my calling is to be part of a local church that's going to grow the kingdom of God. If you're in a church, no, you're not if you're in this church, but if you're going to a church that their primary focus is not building the kingdom of God, you should run. Because they have no business being a church. The function of the church is to build the kingdom of God, to make disciples. That's what we do. Everything that we do, Sunday school, vacation Bible school, women's Bible study, adult Bible study, all those things have to be put together to build the kingdom of God. If we're doing something that's not building the kingdom of God, we should not be doing it. It's just wasting time. Time we don't have. Our 
wrap this up and take it. I love this. I love this verse. Then I heard the voice of the Lord say, Who shall I send? And who will go with us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. You want to be used by God? Here I am. Send me. Have you ever just said, God, I know our purpose is to build your kingdom. Here I am. Use me to do that. Let me, let my part of the tree, if you would, let my branch, let my arm, my leg, whatever it is, part of the church that I am, whatever part of the body of the church that I am, let it be used to build your kingdom. But here I am, Lord, send me. Send me <coughs> to do whatever it is you need done. Have you ever just told God, all right, I give up. I'm done fighting my plan against your plan. I want my plan to be your plan. Imagine what would happen if your plan was lined up with God's plan. You wouldn't have to worry about being happy because you'd be happy. You'd have the peace. Isn't it what that peace that passes all understanding? I mean, there's nothing better than the peace of God. Nothing. It's it's just that's how it is. Look at all these notes I didn't use. I should go back and use them. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, if we're gonna truly, truly follow God, we have to do just that. We have to follow God. We can't talk about it. Again, oh boy, it would really be nice if God used me. God could use you as soon as you say, here I am, Lord, send me. He's waiting for you to simply say, here I am, Lord, use me. Let's pray and then we'll do communion. Father, I just thank you so much for allowing us to, uh, to serve you. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, use us in a mighty way. That you would uh, protect us and guide us. And, Father, that you would wrap your arms around and love us. But, Father, mostly that we would be willing to say, Here I am, Lord. Send me. So, Father, as we take a moment just to remember you, may you, uh, may you take this day Truly make it about you. In Jesus' name, amen.